Max, amigo. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, sir. Hey, I sent a picture. I was the first one. You were the first one with the certificate? Or at least I was the first one to send a picture. No, well, oh yeah. Well, you know, that was the requirement. All right. Let me let me let me check the WhatsApp. Let me check. How did it go? Was it was it hard? Did you feel like maybe you were running out of time? No, I actually uh, was around 90 98 percent like a, a week ago i mean maybe oh so yeah so you were pretty advanced already oh 92 percent okay a week ago yeah but and i was i was stuck with some with some parts of the of the platform okay all right yeah, the platform was pretty, it gets pretty crazy sometimes. Yeah, because in some items, I uh, was wrong because I didn't start the sentence with a capital letter or vice versa. Yeah, and then it, it, tell, it told you that it, that's not the way, right? Yeah. Or it wouldn't accept it as an answer. Completely. Uh, I feel I, you. I, I finished um, the last the last exercise today. I was at ninety eight percent, and I don't know why it didn't accept it. Like I was trying to type it because when someone gave me the the answer, I just copy paste it, and that was it. And it should have, you You should have, that's how it should have worked, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe there was uh, a blank uh, space or uh, maybe the apostrophe or something. No, I don't know. Yeah, maybe it was a, a double T or a double S. I don't know. You know, sometimes it also has to do with uh, the... Um, it also has to do with the platform itself. Hello, sure. Beatrice. Hello. But I tried Hi, to, to do it. And it would still, it still gave you the wrong answer, right? Yeah. And yeah. They gave me, this is, this is the correct answer. And I read it and I, I and thought it still wouldn't. that was, that's what I was trying to do. Okay. And then I copy paste it and voila. All right. All right. So then it was finally when you did that, it did it did work. Yeah. Okay. I reached the hundred percent. All right. All right. Well that's good. That's good. You know, I'm glad that you I'm glad that you were able to finish. So I check the chat just to make sure. I'm gonna, you know, I can't even find my freaking. I'll look right now. Hold on. You're freaking what? You my freaking phone. phone. I can't find my phone. Like the other day, I think the other day was the first. Remember how I told you? I think this is the first time that I take a picture of the screen, and somebody had asked me, and then and because I I never like you know I'm so busy trying to see how we can move the class along, I really forget about the phone. And it wasn't until yesterday or the day before where I was like, oh my God, I need, you know, I need to take the picture of the phone. When was it? It wasn't yesterday, right? It was the day before yesterday. I can't remember. Maybe it was two years, two days ago. Two days ago. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Um, so I have something planned out for us today to kind of finish it off. I wanted to prepare you guys for your next module. Um, since uh, Bea and Max, since you guys are the only ones here, but I have they told you guys what is your next module if you guys are going to the next module? Have they said, hey, so you're moving? Because you guys are in PA3. It's advanced one. 
so you guys are going to advance one yeah then okay there's uh advanced two advanced three and then mm -hmm. then there's something like tuffle one tuffle two and those those are really good if you guys are I, if you guys are interested in doing those type those type of classes, I also have seen some pronunciation classes. And so all you guys do throughout the class is just work on pronunciation. So um, that increases your fluency, that increases your conversational skills, your vocabulary. And, you know, it's but advanced, advanced, the, the few classes of advanced that I have seen um, are they're actually really good. I, I really like them. Um, they keep you always kind of talking, you know, they request for you to talk a lot. And so I think that that is the best way that you can get better, right? Hopefully, hopefully that's the way it works out. Uh, you guys will be getting a certification from PA3. And if you guys were doing PA2 before, then that means that, you know, it's kind of following that pattern. So the next one should be the advanced one. Hopefully, you know, that's the way it works out. So because of that, I wanted to touch up on pronunciation and helping you guys get better at that. Uh, I, I had like a little presentation with some slides and some practice exercises that we could do. And then we could do kind of like a little breakaway and, and, and see how we can put that into use in an actual conversation. So um, welcome, Josue. Hello. How's it going, Josue? I'm doing great, teacher. All right, good, good. While we wait for everybody to come in, I want to talk to you guys. Pretty good, teacher. The, but you know what? I, yes. Um, by being here in this group with you as a teacher, I can't remember you um, pointing a, a mistake while I was well, speaking or I don't know, and I guess I, I believe that that's very important because in my personal case, mm -hmm. I never forget that kind of corrections. I see what you're saying. All right. Well, you know, I think it might be a little bit too late. Now, maybe not pointing out mistakes, but I don't know if you remember, you were reading uh, 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 I, I believe it was like a an exercise that we did, and it wasn't it wasn't a point out. It was more like a pronunciation. It was not it was not right. right. So I, I believe there was a pronunciation, and then we we actually did it kind of like in terms of the class, right? In terms of general, um, for example, when we're pronouncing the th. Right. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that. I remember the, that. Yeah. Now the, I you know, remember doing the th sounds. Yeah. So now, so now here's the thing, Max. Whenever, well, you know, your teacher is the only person that can point out and 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 give you constructive criticism. That's what it's called, constructive criticism, right? The way that you're saying it, this is the way that you should be saying it, right? And then give you an idea of how to do it together. Now. What I have noticed, what I have noticed, Max, is that you will give your word for word, and that is A-OK, -okay, right? Now, as you move along through the modules, you will see that different teachers are going are gonna to ask you to pick up the speed between the words or the, or the quiet moments. And so what ends up happening is that sometimes when we do that, the pronunciation on some of the words usually kind of goes off a little bit, right? And so I haven't really done anything like that here because the way that you have been pronouncing your words has actually been pretty good. I haven't heard any words being mispronounced to the point that I needed to say, hey, Max, wait a minute, I, you, you said that wrong. Well, thanks, teacher. That's, so, so I, that's I mean, good, that's good to hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, don't worry about that. But remember that eventually we're going to come back around and someday we're going to be in an advanced class, Max. And when it becomes advanced, then we start 
pinpointing every little, you know, every little thing that is said and done, that's where, you know, that's where it comes up. So okay. that's why we're going to touch up on uh, pronunciation so that you guys go to A1 feeling really good about how you guys are going to sound. And I'm going to teach you some tricks, too, on how to, okay. you know, how to sound a little bit Sounds better as great. well. Right. Sounds All great. Right. All right. So uh, Jarvin, hello. Bessie, hello. Hello, teacher. Hello, hello. Good to good to have you on. Good to have you, Jarvin. And Bessie, Bessie, right? Bessie's here. Bessie, hello. Hello, good evening. Hello, here good evening. Yet. All right. Wonderful. Wonderful to hear. Welcome. And as a reminder, we are on day number three, week number four. Okay. And so you guys know my favorite question. How is the platform work going? I have to work more in the platform. Okay. Have you have you gotten to at least the 80%, Bessie? Um, no, that is going to be my my homework tonight. <laughs> homework tonight. Okay. Remember that you have today and to tomorrow. Get the 80%. Yeah. At least the yes. 80%. Yeah. Now you should be aiming for a lot more, Bessie. And the Excuse least, me? you you should be aiming for a lot more. You should like shoot really high, just in case that you know. I I always say. Okay. Shoot Thank for you. the highest. Okay. All right. Remember that the goal is at least the eighty percent. All right. How about you, Thank Jarvin? You. Thank you, Bessie. Thank you. How about Jar? How about you, Jarvin? It's almost ready, teacher. I am in thirty-five percent. Okay. All right. In the platform, but today I, I will worry in that. All right. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Uh, remember, remember, Jarvin, uh, platform, platform. Platform. There you go. You got it. You got it. Bea, how you doing? Um, I have 90, 95%. In the 95. Platform. Okay. Way to go. Way to go. Yeah. Okay. All right. And I know that Max already completed and got the certification. And Vanessa, hello, welcome. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Vanessa, how are you doing with the platform? How close are you to the 80%? I finished. You I did. Oh, well yes. done. All right. Yes, I have the certificate. Did you post the picture before Max? No. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. So we're I checking forgot. on that. We're checking on that with Max because I think ah, Max okay. Max was the first one to do it. Ah, uh, so I forgot. And we're... I finished yesterday. All right. All right. Good. Good. Good to hear. Please keep in mind that you guys have till tomorrow, right? But I do recommend for you guys to try to get at least the eighty percent if you guys haven't gotten there so far. Today, everybody. Today, I was telling Max that we wanted to work and we wanted to prepare you guys um, for that eventual, you know, advanced class. And so, what I wanted to work on today was some exercises with pronunciation and some tips and tricks for you guys to be able to apply them. So let me go ahead, let me go ahead and show you guys the presentation itself. And let me see here, some of this stuff, some of the stuff you guys are already pretty good at. So we're just gonna skip right through it. All right. So this is a quick, I wanna say that it, it maybe it's not really a teaching, it's more like a, you know, it's like talking to you guys about tips and some tricks that you guys can do on your own to be able to kind of have that idea of what a conversation, a fluent conversation should sound like, okay? So for this one, what I wanted to do is I wanted to touch up on um, different rules in pronunciation, in fluency. And I wanted to kind of just make sure that you guys are aware of what's going on and how it works. Because the pronunciation portion of what we're doing 
has to do with the word stress or how you stress the words. When you guys see a word, where do you put the stress? Because based on that, you are also giving the meaning, right? If you put the stress in the wrong portion of the word, you could change the meaning of that word. And then, so that's gonna affect your conversation, your communication in general. Enunciation is the actual sounds the letters make. So in a phrase, you are going to be looking at the pronunciation of each of the words and enunciating each of the letters. Is that, is that good? Are, are you guys okay with that? Okay, now there is also a phrase stress. So in what portion of the phrase do I stress the loudest? Where do you, I want to place the emphasis? That is also another portion of what we're going to look at. So let me go ahead and put this one here and we're gonna use phrase. Stress. Okay. Now, to give you guys an example of the phrase or using the different characteristics of a phrase stress, let's think of the word, I love you. Okay. It's very common. Everybody uses it. But I don't know if you guys have noticed that Americans use it a lot. And they use it with different emphasis in different portions of that phrase, right? If I start off this conversation, right? And I put the emphasis on the I, and I say, I love you, what does that mean? Versus I love you, or I love you. As you guys can see, we start off in I, we move on to love, and then we move on to you. In other words, when you guys say it like this, you are trying to tell the other person that it is you, I, I love you, right? And then, so that's where the little accent is. That's where the stress is going to be. If you're just trying to let the other person know that you are in love, then that's what you are going to emphasize. You are going to say, I love you, right? And really increase the volume on the word love. And the same thing happens to who do you love? I love you. No, you don't love me. Yes, I do. I love you, dummy. Right? And then so you put the emphasis on you. It's the same exact word. But because you are stressing different portions, you change the meaning of what you are talking about. And that is English. Now, it gets a little bit harder, but it also gets a little bit easier, okay? Because, of course, what is pronunciation? How can you tell somebody that it's, that it's pronouncing correctly? What are we looking for? What does it mean? What is, what, you know, what's the recipe for having good pronunciation, okay? So, with pronunciation, what we are looking for is a few things, if you want to look at it that way. We want to know if you are stressing the right portion of the word. But remember that we're also listening for the letter and we're also listening for the phrase in general. What is the meaning of the phrase or where are you putting the stress? What is the meaning of the word and where you are putting the stress and how you are pronouncing those letters? And so let's begin with that, right? 
So phrasal verbs, phrasal verbs, all right? This one is very commonly used. And what is a phrasal verb? Well, it has different meanings than what the actual words are saying. I fall apart or fall apart. It doesn't mean that you really are falling apart. brazos, and then you know your hair, you know, fell off. Your ears fell off. No. When you guys hear, when you guys hear the verb "fall apart," what do you guys understand? Fall apart. Maybe someone hurt your feelings. Somebody hurt your feelings. Okay. Broken hearted. Okay. All right. What else? What else could you say? Have you guys ever gone into an interview and you got so nervous that you just completely failed even though you knew what you were, you know, even though you were the perfect fit for that inter for the job and you knew what you had to say, you just got so nervous that you just completely fell apart. That is also something else that you could say, you know, falling apart. Okay? Like feel disappointed. You could say, you could, yeah, you could say it like that too. You disappointed somebody. You could, yeah, or you feel disappointed yourself oh my god i feel so disappointed yeah you could you could do it like that as well all right how about when you guys hear breakdown i was driving my car and i had a breakdown what does that mean what do you guys what do you guys think it means it could happen that your car won't start it could be that my car just stopped I had mechanical failures. And now you can do a breakdown on your car. You can do a breakdown on a bike. Um, if you're doing a presentation, you can do a breakdown of your presentation as well. So it just depends on how you're using it. Uh, hello, Iris. Welcome, Maricela and George. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. We're doing a quick overview review practice. Thank Good you. evening, teacher. Thank hello. you. Hello, hello, Good hello. Good evening. Hello. Hello, hello. Okay, so we have different phrasal verbs, and we have verbs, and we have nouns. Okay. The stress changes whether you're using a verb, a noun, or a particle. Now, these here are specific phrasal verbs. This is what we, what we call a compound word, because as you guys can see, it takes two words to form one. And it could be two completely word, it could be two complete separate words, and you can sound them out like that, like fall apart, or it could be two words put together and you could sound them out a little bit different, which is get away, right? So it's two separate words, but they're connected. So now the sound has to be connected as well, all right? So we have the verbs which fall apart, break down, break in, break through, go on, move over, give up. We have the nouns, get away, come back, break down, break in, breakthrough, look out, outlook, put on, or income. And so now, where should you put the stress? Well, if you're using verbs, you're putting the stress on the last portion. So it should sound very low and then increase in volume, fall apart, fall apart. Right, and so the volume has to go up. If you're using nouns, then the stress is at the very beginning and then it fades away, the volume fades away. 
So it starts up high, get, and then it drops, get away. And then you lose the volume. Come back, it's a comeback. Break down, break in, all right? Break through. Look out and outlook. Put on or income. What's the meaning of outlook? Outlook is como, I want to say, tenés una mejor vista. You have a better outlook in life. So look at it like look at it like this, Max. When I was a teenager, I thought life was really bad and that it sucked. And then I had a series of accidents that made me value life for what it was. And I found out how beautiful it was. And so all of those accidents changed my outlook of life. Me cambiaron el modo de verlo, if you want to look at it that way. So the outlook. Now, eh, también es una, it's an app by Microsoft for emails. Yeah, it changed from Hotmail to Outlook. outlook. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So you, you pronounce it the same way, Outlook. You pronounce it the same way. So it has to do with the way you see things. A different perspective. Yeah, yeah, that, that kind of that kind of goes with it. All right. Well, it looks different. It's it's a different look, yeah. You're in the outside looking in. You can look you can yeah, you can look at that way. All right, so now we have the particles. Whenever you guys see particles, it is the second option. Like saying set up, set up, do over, do over, leave out, give away. There's a big giveaway. Uh, back, El Bac had a big giveaway. They were giving an apartment. Did you guys hear about that? No, no, all right. Point out and turn down. Okay, now, why are we talking about stressing? Why is it important to know what portion of a verb I should put the stress on or what portion of a noun I should put the stress on? What does that have to do? What does that help you do? To sound more natural. To sound more natural. That's what we're looking for, right? We don't want to give the wrong meaning. And so with that, let's start off with actually going into some of those exercises of pronunciation. Uh, let me see if it's, uh, we already saw some of those. All right, so we can look at some of these. Okay. This becomes important. We are talking about being able to identify where the stress is. Do I put that on the first portion of the letter or first part? Or do I put that on the second part? Okay. Now, it's easy when you have words that have one syllable or two syllables. But when you start to get into three syllables, four syllables, it kind of changes a little bit. So the bigger the word that you choose or that you want to use, the stress is going to change. And what I want to talk about right now 
is also part of word stress pronunciation. And it is identifying the syllables. How many syllables in a word? Because depending on the number of syllables, you will either do it on the first syllable or on the second syllable. That's what you guys are going to hear the most. Okay? So, we have one syllable words, but they're not really that common. We actually use two syllable words the most. That is the most commonly used, right? And because of that, you guys are going to see a lot of it. Now, because they do exist, the one syllable words do exist, let me talk to you guys about some of those. And those are easy because there is no stress that somebody might be able to hear or not hear. For example, if you guys are saying the word dog, okay? I want you guys to think of the sound that is also a, that is also tied to that word. Dog. Dog. Only one sound. That means that it only has one syllable. And because it only has one syllable, what is it that you're not going to be doing? No. no stress it sounds normal so on the one syllable you guys will get no stresses and you don't have to worry about it for example dog cat cheese one word one syllable one sound cheese dog cat what else what else can you think of that has just one sound Dog, cat, cheese. How about shoes? How about shoes? Cow. 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 You got it. Cow. I will accept that. Yes, sir. Cow. Bat. One word, one sound, one syllable, no stress. You guys, there is no way in hell you guys can say cheese wrong. Can you? <laughs> How do you say dog? One sound, dog, right? Or cat. Pretty easy. Uh, teacher, teacher, sorry, what I mean, uh, cheese room. What? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, George. What does What does what mean? Uh, you say like at the room? Like room? You know what? Are, are, George, do you want to use the word room? Because room has only one sound. Is that, is that, the, is that, is that what is that what you're saying, George? Yes, yes. Okay, okay, then yes. Yes, room. Yes. So now just to guys just, just to make sure that we're on the right path, right? You guys see these words. One word, one sound, one syllable. So that means that when you guys come to the two words you guys can clearly hear the two sounds. The examples that we have are chick and chicken. Two sounds, chick and two syllables, two sounds, which means, which means what? We have to stress correctly. Where do we put the stress in chicken? We put it in the first portion, chick, chick and. 
All right. Now, most words that we use have two syllables. And the only thing you have to think about is, am I using a noun, a verb, an adjective? Because that's where the rules are gonna stick the most. If you are using a noun, the stress goes on, who can remember? In the last. In, in the first, 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 but it's a first, you got it. In the first portion. If you are using a verb, ahora sí, Vanessa, if you're using a verb, where does it go? The last. <laughs> in the last, all right. If you're using an adjective, it is also in the first portion, okay? And now these are the most commonly used words. We either use nouns, verbs, or adjectives, okay? So how does that sound, okay? Let's use the word that first appears, which is pre, and then end, okay? And we have a verb, which is like that, okay? So how do these words sound? And what is the difference between one and the other? Okay, if I tell you guys that I will be giving you a present tomorrow, what do you understand? I will give you guys a present. So you're going to give a, a little something away? I could be giving you a little something. I could be giving you a little gift. Yeah. A gift. Okay. So what if I tell you that you guys will present tomorrow? All of you guys will present tomorrow. That what are you going to show something? Oh, there you go, Vanessa. That's it. That's it. So now imagine you guys are trying to tell somebody that they're going to present a PowerPoint, a video, but you say present instead. And they think that they have to give a gift. Do you guys think that that would cause a little bit of a confusion or a little bit of confusion in the class? So why is it important to know what syllable to stress? Because it changed the meaning. That, there you go. Depends. There you go. And the, it, the... And it is a very big portion of fluency. You can take fluency and you can kind of summarize it and say pronunciation. And so what comes with pronunciation? Word stress, rhythm, tone, pitch. It's, it's I want to say it's a, it's a, a party of ingredients that you need to incorporate for it to be able to work. So remember this, right? Remember the sounds, how many sounds the word makes, depending on the sounds, that's how many syllables it has. And oh brother, there are some words that have a lot of syllables. So remember that it also changes depending on the word. All right, so let's see, let's move on. Ah, these are the ones, these are, these are some of the longer words. So it's a lot of rules, but I want to talk to you guys about them because you guys will see them. Um, for example, one, two syllables, those are pretty easy. 
three syllables, uh, you know, sometimes it gets a little bit complicated depending on what the word that you're choosing. But when the words get really, really long, I want you guys to not think so much on the syllables. I want you guys to think of what are the letters that that word is ending with. So, for example, if a letter, I'm sorry, if a word ends with the letters I and C, like saying graphic, okay, you will, you are going to do kind of like a count back and you are going to focus on the second to end syllable let, let me let me show you geographic geographic how many syllables does that have how many sounds geo well geographic Or I guess. Well, uh, let me see. Hi. I think I, I might have said it wrong. G. Let's let's go like this. Geographic. Vanessa, three. There we go. Yeah. I'm sorry, George. That was that was my fault. That was my fault. So it's three sounds. Three sounds. Three syllables. So here the question is: Well, I can't choose between the first or the second. So which one do I use? Well, since we're working with the letters I see, it will be the middle syllable or the second from the end. In this particular uh, example, it's graph. So you start off and you say geo and then graph and then you lower the volume again, ick. Geographic, geographic, geograph, Ick, geographic. And you're going to do that every time you guys see a word that ends with IC. It's always the second to last syllable that will get the volume. Geologic, geolo geologic, 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 geo I'm sorry. <clears throat> That's what happens when you geologic, 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 geologic. All right, where is the volume? In the middle. Okay, so something like that also happens with words that end with uh, S I O. I'm sorry, I O N. It should, well, I want to say that it, you guys can either use Sion or Tion. If the word ends in Sion, like television, you will also apply the rule. Second syllable to last, television, television, television. If the word ends with the T-I-O-N sound, like in revelation, revelation, you guys will also do the middle. So now, this is what you have to keep in mind. One or two syllables, it's either the first or the second. If it's more syllables than two, three, four, five, six, seven, it all depends on how it ends. So for example, if the words end with CY, TY, PHY, or GY, then you are going to do the third syllable to the last one. D, ma, cra, C. Four. D, ma, cra, C. Four sounds. And so I have to count back. And the third one, which is mo, is going to receive the volume upgrade. So how do you say it? Well, Democracy, that's how you say it. Democracy, you get a little volume in the mo, democracy, okay? 
Look at this one. Dependability. Oh, dependability. Oh my God. How many sounds? A lot, teacher. It has a lot. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it does have a lot, right? So the TY is one, the LI is another, and the third from last is the BI. That is the one that's going to get the volume upgrade. So how does that sound? Dependability. 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 Even though you say it in a low voice, it will always have like a little extra push. Dependability. It has like a little extra sound. Okay. Photography. Photography. How many sounds? Photography. Four. Okay. So if we count back, we have the phi, we have the gra, and we get to the t. Photography. Y ahí tenemos el volume upgrade. And rules. We have a lot of rules. And that's how they continue. If you guys are using compound words, compound words like blackbird or greenhouse. If you are using a noun, this is what we just saw. If we are using a noun, the first portion gets the volume upgrade. If we are using an adjective, the second, well, it, the, the, the stress is going to be on the second portion. So you kind of look, you want, you, you kind of want to look at it that way. And if you're using the verbs, it will definitely be on the second portion. Like if you guys are saying understand, understand. Is everybody okay so far with these words? Okay, all right, so let's practice it a little bit. Practice our sounds. Okay, this is what I want for us to do. Help me out. I need you guys to help me out. And wherever you guys see a dark letter, I want you to start it off with a little bit higher volume, only on the letters that are dark. So for example, here, if, if we're doing about volume, right? We can say, I thought your brother was a bus conductor. Okay. I thought your brother was a bus conductor. So the volume is really on the I and not everything else. Estamos bien hasta aquí? All right. Who can help me read in the next one? Vanessa. Vanessa. Démosle, démosle, Vanessa. Dele. Remember, volume. I thought your brother was a bus conductor. All right. Put put a little bit more volume on thought. I thought your I don't know. <laughs> I thought your <laughs> I, I don't know how to separate the pronunciation. All right. All right. Try it like I, this. I <laughs> just normal I. I. And then I, when you get to when you get to this other one. You just say it like as, as well. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want you to scream it, right? But I want you to. So think of it like this, right? Let's see if I. Let's see how I sound. Tell me if I sound different. <laughs> okay. I, here we go. I thought your brother was a bus conductor. Was there a difference in volume? No. There you go. You got it, yes. Vanessa. I'm sorry. I was talking. I'm sorry. <laughs> let's do it again. Do it. Yeah. You got okay. it. I told you, your brother was a bus conductor. <laughs> you got it. That's it. All right. Okay. All right. Who wants to help me out with the third one down the line? Me, teacher. Uh, I will do it. A ver, Bessie, fíjese que I think George raised his hand first, Bessie. You, ah, can, have okay. the you can have the fourth one, Bessie. Okay. Okay, Jorge. Okay. I told your brother was a bus conductor. Okay, hold on, hold on. Yes, yes, like that. But when you get to your, your I want I want to I want more volume. More volume, okay. Yeah. I, told, I told your brother was a I'm sorry. 
I thought your brother was a bus conductor. There it is. There, you got it. Right? I thought your, and then right there, the voice goes up a little bit. Okay, you got it. Bessie, number four. Okay. I thought your brother was a bus conductor. You got it. But now you, you, you gave the volume to your and brother, but that's okay. That'll work. That'll work. I thought your brother, right? And then the volume goes up. Your brother. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now before we move on to the next ones, I think you already guys, I think you guys already caught on to what we're doing, right? It is the same exact line, but each one of the lines means something different. How you're saying it or where you put the volume changes the whole meaning of everything. In the first portion, the most important is I, and that's why the volume is so high. Yo, yo pensé que tu hermano era el conductor. I thought your brother was a conductor. I, I thought. The next one is I thought. Yo pensé. Right, y pensé is the is the, the word that gets the most stress. I thought your brother was a conductor. So here, el pensamiento. I thought I thought your brother was a conductor. So who are we talking about? Your brother. Everything else doesn't matter. The most important portion is your. And then we get to hey, I thought your brother was a bus conductor. Who are we talking about? the brother right and so depending on how you use that it changes the meaning of your sentence so now you also have to focus on how you're pronouncing right so how you're saying i and how you're saying thought and how you're saying your brother and how you're pronouncing the words it also makes a big big difference in how it sounds so here it is dun, 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 dun. music remember music this is how it works ta, 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 ta. think of it like this ta, ta, ta. there's a rhythm there's a bunch of tests for English, and most of them will tell you that you're failing in grammar, and those are pretty easy, right? Okay, I know that I'm failing in grammar. Um, I'm not uh, pronouncing correctly, okay? Now we can pretty much have an idea of pronunciation and what's happening there. Um, you are, you're misusing articles. Uh, uh, maybe you are not sounding the TH there's no TH sound, and that is also something, right, that you guys can get in terms of feedback. But you guys can also get rhythm, no rhythm in his sentence. Oh my God, I didn't know you needed rhythm in your sentence. You do, you need rhythm in your sentences. They have to have a certain rhythm. So. How does that work? It's, it's super easy. It's really, really easy. I want you guys to think of a sentence with two types of words. You have content words and you have function words. Okay? So content words are the big, bold ones that you guys see on your screen. Bot, car, Tuesday. Okay. If you guys talk to me and you tell me, what did you do Sunday? And I told you guys, bought car, Tuesday. What do you guys think happened? What am I trying to imply? What did I do on Sunday? And I tell you, bought car, Tuesday. Or better yet, if you ask me, what did you do this last week? And I tell you, bought car Tuesday, what did I do? What did I do during the week? Drive the car. <laughs> well, well, yeah, right, I did, I did. But before I took it out to the, before I took it out, before I took it out for the drive, what did I do? I couldn't just drive it out. I needed to. Buy the car, right? So bought car Tuesday. I bought a car on Tuesday. 
you can from those three content words, you could pretty you could pretty much formulate the idea of what's going on. There's really not that much that you need. Now, in order to make it sound good, you are going to add some function words. And that is I, A, and on. Okay. What did you do this week? Oh, I bought a car on Tuesday. I bought a car on Tuesday. What did you do? I bought a car on Tuesday. Little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot, little dot. You guys see the little dots? Little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot. So that's the way you're supposed to talk. Teacher, it sounds like you're singing. Yes, that's exactly what you're doing. That's what I want you to do. I want you to sound like you're rhyming, like you're a rapper, like you're singing, like you're Shakira. I bought a car on Tuesday. That's what it's supposed to sound like. If you're using an I, the sound is low. If you're following it up with a word of something that you did, bought, that increases the volume. So you should start with I bought a car on Tuesday. I bought a car on Tuesday. What did you do this weekend? I bought a car on Tuesday. Did you guys hear how it sounds like you're, yeah. Yeah, I bought a car on Tuesday. This, ladies and gentlemen, is pronunciation. You need it. If somebody ever gives you feedback on bad pronunciation, they can tell you, uh, your, you know, the stress, the word stress. They can give you specific feedback, but they can also tell you that your sentence rhythm is off. What would you have to do to not have sentence rhythm? Well, you see these little dots and big dots? Imagine that you're only talking about little dots. I bought a car on Tuesday. You are just reciting the words, I bought a car on Tuesday. There is no change. And there has to be that little change. All right, so let's try one more time, right? Little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot. So little dot, little volume. Big dot, increase the volume, right? I took a bus to the park. I took a bus to the park. I took a bus to the park. All right, all right, who wants to try the music? Who wants to try the rhythm? Little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot, little, little, little. Who wants to try it out? Max, Max, is that you? Okay. I took a bus to the park. To the park. To the park. All right. Now, think of the rhythm. Think of a song. I, I took a bus to the park. Right. I took a bus to the park. What did you do yesterday, Max? I took a bus to the park. There we go. There we go. You got it. I took a bus to the park. Think of it as that. Now, teacher, does everybody really sound like this? Yes. Everybody sounds like this. Now, some people put a little bit more emphasis on certain words because they really want to drive the point across. I, y te gritan, but I took a bus to the park. But that could also change. They could say, I took a bus to the park. You know, I went to the park yesterday. And then so the emphasis is that they went to the park. And so that changes. It also, how you pronounce the words. I took. I took. And then there's linking as well. I took a. I took a bus to the park. So instead of saying two words, you pronounce one. Tuka. I took a, I took a bus to the park. And if you want to start using linking more, 
you start to link these words closer together. I took a bus to the park. Ah, what do you mean, teacher? Well, now you're saying tuka and to the. I took a bus to the park and you are singing and it sounds fantastic when you sing. I took a bus to the park. That's how you would sound if you're going one word at a time. But if you're going one word of your one word at a time, your rhythm is not going to be in sync with what you're saying or with what the other person is saying. If that happens, you guys are going to notice that people start to talk to you slower. Don't get upset. Don't get angry. They are only doing it because they might think that you probably need to go at a slower pace. And it's totally okay. Okay. All right. So have a little, have another one, another one, another one. I like these. These are pretty good, right? What do you think, Max? Do you like these? Yeah. All right. So let's try this one. Vanessa, do you want to try this one? I know, I know that you, you I know okay. you always participate. All right. So think of it like this. Remember, little, big, little, big, little, little, big, little. Right? Okay. All right. Um, I'll build a fire in the fireplace. Oh, you got it. That, that's it. You got it. First shot. There it is. That's it. I'll build a fire in the fireplace. That's it. That's it. So I know that for us it's a little bit hard because in Spanish, there is a, we don't do this. Right? You start to sing and you sound weird and people make fun of you. So you stop and you start doing your sounds normally. All right. So... Ladies and gentlemen, I know I took a little bit of your time. You guys saw how good this, I really like this presentation because it puts a little bit of practice. And look, I have some role plays for us to do tomorrow. Um, for those of you guys who didn't get to practice today, uh, try to, let's try to do it tomorrow and then see how we can get that rhythm going, okay? I took a bus to the park. <laughs> I'm going to take a shower right now, teacher. <laughs> right? That, that's how it is. That's how you implement it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I promise tomorrow I'll give you guys back the three minutes and I'll let you guys off a little bit earlier. Thank you so much. Have a good night. And I hope you guys enjoyed this portion. Nice Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Thank you, guys. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. It's a great topic.